Hey there, fight fans. In today's video, and she makes me so angry. Like, I just want to yell at her, but I'll never raise my voice to a woman. The friend of Alex Perea's accuser finally speaks out, shedding some new light on the situation. Sean O'Malley shocked his neighbors. And I'm just spreading the love, paying people's rent. Plus, Dracus Duplessis' secret training method has been leaked. Just as Alexander Volkanovsky predicts a thrilling knockout at UFC 305 between Israel Adesanya and Drakus. Now, meanwhile, Michael Chandler fires back at Conor McGregor after a now deleted taunt and the truth behind Dana White's decision to fire Mohamed Makhayev from the UFC is revealed. Also, Hamza Chimaev fulfilled a wild request from a Belgian MMA fighter and Sergei Pavlovich's response to rumors about his mental state following his recent loss to Alexander Volkov. And then finally, UFC fighter Bryce Mitchell, who is known for his controversial views, has made yet another crazy statement. Elon Musk, you can kiss my ass, buddy. But before we dive into everything, I just want to remind you we are close to reaching 75,000 subscribers. So come on, let's do this. Like and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get started. Michael Chandler has responded to Conor McGregor's latest taunt after the Irishman posted a now-deleted video. In the clip, McGregor aboard a boat mischievously grinned into the camera while swapping hats, eventually putting on one that said, Champ Champ. The video was set to Sam Cooke's song, A Change Is Gonna Come. In response, Chandler tweeted, Can't wait to bounce your champ champ head off the canvas. Get your shit together so I can. <laughs> now, as you may already know, just two weeks ago at UFC 304 in Manchester, the undefeated 24-year-old Mohamed Makhayev secured his seventh victory in the world's premier fighting organization, the UFC. But this fight was the last under Makhayev's current contract with the UFC, after which Dana White announced his release, remarking that the PFL will have a wonderful undefeated fighter. Subsequently, reports surfaced that Mohamed Makhayev was dismissed because his management had been negotiating with the PFL behind the UFC's back, a claim that Makhayev's team categorically denied. Mohamed Makhayev's statement that the PFL made him an offer is not true, said the organization's vice president, Mike Kogan. This story is a lie. No one from PFL or Bellator has spoken to this guy or even shown any interest, Kogan wrote on social media, commenting on the Brit's words. And such things as is well known, Dana, well, he does not forgive. However, it is understood that Makayev's lie was not the sole reason for his dismissal. As Makayev himself pointed out, many fans do not like his fighting style. They don't want to see me keep shooting and taking somebody down, but... Recently, rumors began circulating online alleging that Sergei Pavlovich's brother claimed that the UFC heavyweight was in a deep depression and losing interest in the sport. Those reports, though, quickly spread across various platforms with many outlets picking up the story without verifying its authenticity. However, Sergei Pavlovich himself soon addressed these rumors, dismissing them as baseless. He emphasized that he remains committed to his career and focused on his goals in the UFC. Друзья, всем привет! Оказывается, у нас братом есть третий брат, который любит давать интервью. У меня все хорошо, потихонечку восстанавливаемся. Всем добра! Now it is important to note that Pavlovich has faced a challenging period in his career recently. In November of last year, the 32-year-old Russian made an unsuccessful attempt to capture the interim UFC heavyweight championship, suffering a knockout loss to Britain's Tom Aspinall in the first round. This defeat was then followed by another setback in June of this year, when Pavlovich lost a unanimous decision to fellow Russian Alexander Volkov, further derailing his momentum. These losses came after an impressive streak of six consecutive first-round track record shows that he has the potential to rebound stronger. 
His fans and supporters are hopeful that he will overcome these challenges and return to his winning ways soon. Now, as you already know recently, Alex Perez found himself at the center of a controversy involving allegations made by a 21-year-old woman. The allegations surfaced on social media, with a young woman claiming through a series of TikTok videos that an incident occurred during UFC 302 Fight Week in a hotel. Recently, Alex Perez's accuser's friend Jesse dresses the situation. I was no way um, I say it at all. And me and the other guy are just friends, and nothing about that has changed or will change. I want that to be known. I didn't do anything with anyone that night, and I am. I will never have a fans. Uh, I didn't say. I didn't say. I don't believe. I. I just say. I don't believe. Neither him, neither her. This is important to say. You know, because uh, if you say I don't believe her, that's not true. It can be true, but I don't know. Yeah. You're skeptical. Yeah, I am, obviously, because I know him pretty well. And uh, on the other side, I think uh, it's not okay to judge a woman, you know. Uh, but it's not okay to judge him neither. So, yeah. My name. My name. Is, uh, hold on, bro. I don't. I, I know him. Uh, hey, my name. Is, uh, but he been kicking everybody's Alex, ass. Alex, Alex, uh, Alex about Warrior. me. About me. Who am I? Judo the Santos baby. Judo the Santos. Hell, man. Hey. Hey, awesome, bro. Awesome. Oh, they are doing. They are doing. They are doing. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Now, Alexander Volkanovsky is confident that UFC 305 will feature a thrilling knockout and the highly anticipated matchup. I'm expecting a performance from Israel Adesanya, like a proper performance, like you know how you've seen the Paulo Costa's performance, a fight like that where he goes out and just does it in an impressive fashion. Because Drick is very awkward, very unorthodox, he's got an awkward pressure, and we've seen obviously an awkward pressure from, from Strickland give her easy problems, but that doesn't happen easy twice. There's no way that fight looks the same. Izzy's gonna have a completely different adjustment and uh, he's gonna capitalize. The awkward, unpredictable sort of style that Drickus is gonna give, I don't feel like Izzy's gonna be surprised. I think Izzy might have been a little bit surprised with the pressure and the, the defensive pressure from Strickland, but I don't think there's any surprises this time. I think he's expecting, you know, an, an awkward fighter to be coming and putting the pressure on him, and I think he's uh, gonna be ready to capitalize on that. And that's what I mean by getting a finish. I mean, like, you coming in, doing all this sort of stuff, and him just doing his freakish sort of stuff, leaning back, boom, boom, sort of, you know, like a Rob, that's just how good Izzy is. And I think that guy turns up UFC 305 uh, main event. I think uh, I think Israel Adesanya is going to put on that type of performance where he goes out and gets a, a, a crazy finish. Plus, Dracus Duplessis's secret training method has been leaked. <coughs> 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 We're gonna go and have a quick beer, so we'll just catch up with you a little bit later, eh? See you later, man. Yeah, no, we'll see you, Mark. We'll see you later, Mark. It's choking, man! It's yes, so man. The bag is filling with blood. I think my ribs are broken, and I can feel my toes crunching every time I put weight on it. <laughs> <laughs> Hamza Chimaev recently fulfilled a crazy request made by a Belgian MMA fighter. <laughs> and arrestingly, this is the same who previously made a similar request to Cyril Gaon just a few months ago. <laughs> <laughs> UFC fighter Bryce Mitchell, who is known for his outspoken nature and very controversial views, including his belief in the flat earth theory, is no stranger to making headlines with his provocative statements. 
Hey, Elon Musk, you can take that cyber truck right to hell, right where it belongs, buddy. This is what a real truck looks like. This is 7.3 IDI. It's a 91. Let me show you something that this is going to do that your cyber truck is never going to do. Elon Musk, you can kiss my ass, buddy. You see that? 670,000 miles. You see that? You're never going to get that out of your cyber truck. Hell, you're never going to get that out of your modern diesels. Why? Because there is a conspiracy against the farmer, against a working man. And these politicians are so out of touch with reality, they don't even know what's going on. These politicians can't spell DEF fluid, let alone do they know what the hell it is. And I'm telling you right now, they're making our trucks. As the years go by, they're making them more expensive. They're making them rely on Chinese electronics and they're making them break. You know, I, I paid $3,000 for this truck. $3,000, guys. Starts up every time, goes anywhere I need it to go. Now, it's built in 91. You're telling me that 30-something years later, we can't build a truck that lasts half as long as this? Guys, everything is going backwards. I'm telling you, we used to have it good as a country. And now, people can't afford a $100,000 truck, okay? Most people can. I can't. So I'm driving this, and guess what? I like it better than them $100,000 trucks. And there will be a time, you mark my words, there will be a time where we resort back to these style of trucks out of necessity. We won't have an option because people can't afford a $100,000 truck that breaks down after 200,000 miles. This is what a real man's truck looks like. Like I said, cyber trucks, y'all are all a bunch of pussies. Uh, that's a real truck right there for real men. And all you politicians, is a shame what you've done to this country. It's a shame what you've done to our tractors, our trucks. They all suck. And I wish our tractors would go back to how they was in the 60s. I wish our trucks would go back to how they was in the 60s. And like I said, I have hope that one day they will, out of necessity, the people are going to rise up and we're going to get our freedom back, baby. I love you guys. God bless you guys. And the politicians in this country, you all suck, every single one of you. I would like to uh, talk to you about helping pay some rent, possibly. I just recently won the lottery and I'm trying to help spread the love around the neighborhood. I don't know if you ever heard of crypto, but I just became a billionaire in crypto and I'm just spreading the love, paying people's rent. Doing what? Paying people's rent in the neighborhood. I just became a trillionaire in crypto. Is you God or somebody? That's I've been, been called God before, yes. Oh, Lord, yeah, praise the Lord Jesus. Jesus. What are you gonna buy? You another gold chain, be fire. I was just wondering if uh could give you some money today. Yeah, Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah angels sent from above is what they call us. Love you. Love you. We're not we're not trying to sell you anything. <laughs> you know, I'm not stupid. Yeah. Jiggy situation. So me and my girl are fighting over some stupid shit. She says I didn't listen to her. I listen to you. I fucking listen to you. Anyway, she's so mad at me and I can't fix it. And she makes me so angry. Like I just want to fucking yell at her, but I'll never raise my voice to a woman because that's not being a man. So anyways, I'm fucking angry. I'm hostile. I'm burying this shit. And I see Tiki pop up with his little fucking file beard, that creepy motherfucker, that fucking weasel. And I'm like, Tiki, I'm so fucking pissed off. I fucking choose you to be my enemy to the fucking death, Tiki. Just because I have to put it somewhere. So I'm on my way to train at Tim Planet because I'm kind of fing losing it. Anyways, long story short, is after I even made you guys, I'm gonna be in a real bad place. That is all for today. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel because it is very important to us. And thank you all in advance.